Hey, everyone. Welcome back and happy Thursday. All right, guys. So we're going to be back tomorrow, I believe, for Hot Messy Topics. Actually, I need to message a few people right now, but I will get to it. Don't worry. I'm not going to forget about it. I wanted to just say really quick, we're back to talk about some of the NBC Universal stuff, and it is ugh. So we're going to, we're going to jump right into it. It's always drama when it comes to anything that has to do with the Vanity Fair article or the Bethany Frankel of it all, or just even BravoCon in general. I just filmed uh, for our members only with a very special Bravo Liberty guest who was so highly anticipated this year. You guys are going to freak out. This person is amazing. Love this person. And I can't wait to share that with you. But in the meantime, do all the youtube -y things, smash the like button, show some love, and let's jump right in. All right, guys. So with this NBC Universal stuff, I wanted to share it was by wig hello drama, and I thought that it was interesting. So NBCU boss Francis Berwick says Bethany Frankel pitched three shows to Bravo, but they passed. Now, the reason I thought that this was important is because there are so many people right now who are claiming that Bethany Frankel has just um, been disgruntled, that she's been angry. That is that not the same thing. That she hasn't been happy with the network, and that is why she is leading the charge on the reality reckoning, which is a big statement, and people want to know about it. So that's why I said, let's talk about this. So by way, hello, drama said NBCU boss Francis Berwick on Bethany Frankel by Kate Arthur, Matt Donnelly, Bia Bryde. What do you think generally about the so-called reality reckoning as former Bravo star Bethany Frankel has termed it? I think we've had a mutually beneficial relationship with Bethany. We've stayed in touch including when she pitched us three shows and the three shows were all around Bravo IP. Okay. There was one about a real housewives camp that she wanted to run for real housewives kids. There was one that was around her podcast that is called rewives because it's about housewives. And then we found that to be too similar to another show that we have on the network and one on every night. And the other one was a spinoff of a cast that she wanted to recommend for the housewives in another town. Yes, I'm just generally disappointed. I mean, we care very much about our talent. We think that we have really good relationships. We care about the talent who are currently on our network and the talent who were previously on the network. We want them all to prosper. We want them all to feel good about the process. And we're incredibly empathetic when they sometimes make mistakes that then they get repercussions from. Sometimes we don't agree with what they've done, but we can be empathetic. Now, lastly, they go on the shows and they know that they're going to be judged on social, social media. We give them a lot of guidance. Please don't take it to heart and pay attention to social media, but that's sort of a bit of human nature. Social is anonymous and can be very punishing. And I think that's part of the equation that we try and really lean into and steer them. I think it's sort of safe to say it's just generally disappointing. Now, Bridie reached Bethany Frankel for comment on Berwick's remarks. And this is what was said. Me pitching shows to Bravo months before opening my eyes isn't the smoking gun they think they have. And if that's their biggest argument against the reality reckoning, they better get back to the drawing board. Um, I can say that it doesn't feel like they're backing down. Also, I wanted to add this in there too. Oh, before I get into this, they said that just like the Real Housewives of Miami that took an eight-year hiatus, that family karma is also on a pause. And I think right now they're trying to, and they even made a statement saying that family karma was multi-generational, that it was an amazing show. It had all of the, the things, but it just, the ratings were not there. And it's funny because I spoke to someone from family karma and they felt like their slot at the same time as Yellowstone and football was not a great slot to have. They sort of felt like they were set up for failure on that. But also, like, I mean, if my show was canceled, I would probably try to come up with a few things that I felt as well and maybe why my show would have been canceled. 
But this I wanted to talk about. So Vicky Cumbleson shades Teddy Millencamp as this woman, Teddy, is one of the most hated housewives of all time. Google it. It's not something I made up, and she continues to come for me, likely for relevancy. Vicky clapped back at Teddy's Watch What Happens Live comment. It also most certainly does not excuse her vile comment saying I was threatened by someone who had real cancer. Anyone who uses cancer as a means to insult someone else takes away from how serious cancer is. Discounts all cancer victims and people currently battling cancer and is just downright disgusting. This. Our giant slot machine will reveal two parties in this room who are currently on the outs they will join me center stage to see if we can hash it out and find a resolution let's pull my shady shaft to see who's up tonight who do we have we've got vicky gungelson and question mark who could that be Can I just pause this really quick and say Vicky hates this right now? And she obviously clearly hates her. This is just not a good one. They knew what they were doing, which is great TV and it's great for ratings. But like, you know that Vicky hates her. Okay, wait. Here's the deal. All right. You know what? Last night you win the biggest award of the night. And tonight, we try to squash, squash the beef with Teddy. I know you find her annoying. You have had her banned yes, from attending the Trace Amigas. Mm -hmm. yeah, me. So in this squash that beef, she literally goes on and she says, and I've showed you guys this video already, but she said, why were you asking where I was? around the time of the capital situation. She said, I was at my condo in Puerto Vallarta. She's like, the fact that you insinuated to that was disgusting. And you could see where Teddy was like, oh, yeah, I might have messed up on that one. But then Teddy, from that point, ends up going in on Vicky. And she's like, you know what, Vicky? Maybe it's just you're triggered by someone who really does have cancer. It seems rehearsed. And I don't know if you guys saw, and maybe I'm biased on this one, I don't know. But I honestly, no, I'm not biased on this one. When I had Kiki on from the Talk of Shame for the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recap today, she was so great, so honest, and just so forthcoming with how she felt about things. And she even felt in that moment that it was contrived. It was something that Teddy pulled out of a hat and that she was looking for a moment and it felt very rehearsed. I felt the same way. I think that we can see as especially people, commentators, or anyone who's covering the Bravo content at this point, we can see what's real, what's fake, what's organic, what's not. All of the things. And I feel like this was one of those moments that we could read right through the BS, the bullshit. Teddy. And also her co-host, Tamara Judge, even said, I had a couple words with Teddy and it's not good. It's something that I, I talked to her about and I was not happy with. What do you say to that? Guys, I want to hear what your thoughts are. Go ahead, comment below, smash that like button, show some love. Definitely, honestly, just get like down and dirty and let me know what you think about all of this, especially from the Bethany Frankel to the Teddy Mellencamp and the Vicky Gumbleson and everything in between. I love you guys. <laughs> See you next time.